going everybody? This is Adam from Z Hacks. Today I'm gonna give you a little bit of an instructional video on how to install the Progress Technology rear sway bar on the uh, 2011 to 2016 Honda CRZ. I've never really done anything like this before, but just gonna give you a walkthrough on uh, you know the instructions, how to do it, um, and what you're gonna need to get the job done. Without further ado, let's get to it. So I've got the bar here uh, in this box. I believe it comes with um, some bolts to mount it up and a few other little things. Um, other things I think I'm going to need to get the job done. Uh, we've got my jack here, jack stands, uh, socket set, uh, some brake cleaner potentially, you know, just to clean off, uh, you know, the suspension while I'm down there. Um, and then I got this uh, strut spring compressor from AutoZone. Uh, I believe I'm going to need this to compress the coil springs um, and then that way I can <clears throat> lift them up and bolt up the sway bar because it just it just mounts to some existing holes uh, in the suspension um, So we'll open this up and see what's inside and uh, Get to work All right, So opening this up We've got the sway bar here Pretty nice looking piece a really nice finish on it it's uh it's like a metallic gray uh, which actually you know kind of matches up with some of my decals and some some parts on the CRZ this kind of back <clears throat> trim piece right here uh, is kind of a metallic uh, gray plastic and then I've got the stickers on the, the side over here looking forward to getting it up under there and seeing how it looks um, got some more stuff box all the way down in the bottom there nice little informational packet <clears throat> and we've got uh, all the bolts washers nuts that we're gonna need it looks like the instructions are in there that's nice I actually printed them out separately um, I found them online that's what's going to come in the kit and uh, let's get the car jacked up and get everything in there. So now that the car is jacked up, we need to remove this arrow piece. Um, we're gonna have to do this on both sides. There are two clips. There's one, actually this seems like it's a, that is a Phillips head screw uh, right up in there. And then we've got a clip right over here. So we're just gonna have to take those two out um, and then we can pull this down. We're gonna have to trim this. Um, so there's a template that's actually provided with the kit. You'll just cut it with an X-Acto knife and uh, you'll be good to go from there to remount it. So uh, this was actually a lot simpler than I thought it was going to be. You don't need to use the coil spring uh, compressor tool. Uh, I tried it initially, but the threaded rod that runs through the middle of the clamping uh, ends kept bottoming out on the uh, underside of the body up here. Um, but what you can do, it's actually pretty simple. Um, you can run the uh, you know, the screw right through the hole. Uh, there should be three holes. You can see three nuts and washers on the bottom. Uh, you can run the, the three bolts straight through the holes up here. You don't actually have to do anything. Uh, it looks like I had a chunk out of my spring mount, so um, this one actually fit in quite nicely. Um, but yeah, and then you just run them through. Uh, put the washers and nuts on the bottom side. You may need something to help support the bar on the other side. Um, so I just, I'm using this socket toolbox uh, to help just keep it up a little bit so it's easier to locate on this end. But uh, yeah, pretty straightforward. Uh, not as complicated as I thought it was going to be. Um, and then this wind deflector, I, you know, took these off. That's the only way you can get the bar up in place. So I will be trimming that um, after I get both sides on and tightened up and then we'll put these back on last. 
Uh, one thing that I figured out that you're gonna need um, while tightening these down is gonna be a 7 30 seconds of Allen wrench. You're gonna need that to kind of get down in there on the on the head of the, uh, the screw. So um, it's a little tricky if you've got a socket. You know, in a second wrench, it's gonna probably be easier, uh, at least for this front one. Uh, the other ones aren't too bad. I've gotten them tightened up a little bit, but I was just trying to get the other side uh, up on there, and those went on pretty easily. I didn't even have to jack the car up. Um, once I got, you know, these ones tightened up enough, the bar kind of suspended itself, and then I uh, just stuck these through, and now I just have to tighten them down, but, uh, you know, pretty easy clearance. Uh, I don't know if these are different mounts on each side. Uh, I think they should be the same, but yeah, this one, these ones just dropped right in. So, uh, super simple installation. Uh, so, we'll tighten them down. So, it looks like. Uh, so you can see here, there's a couple of these templates that uh, come printed on the instructions. Um, and then, so I cut it out. It's gonna be reversible, they're exactly the same. Um, so you cut out right above where that clip is right there. Um, it's basically cut straight across. I don't think it's gotta be too specific, but that way you can still clip, you know, the whole panel back in with the two mounting pieces. All right, so here's that part. All trimmed up. I sprayed it with a little bit of brake cleaner just to clean up any of the gunk that was on there. Uh, pretty straightforward. All right, so everything is back installed. You can see these plastic pieces tucked in here nicely, and they fit right in front of these uh, these bolts and the bar itself. So we're looking pretty good um, as far as that goes. I think we're pretty much ready to lower it uh, and uh, see how she rides. I guess while we're working on this, it's about time to give a short update um, on uh, anything that I've done to the Z. Um, I got these Clasio seat covers. Um, they were actually super simple to install. I didn't buy them from the Clasio website. Uh, I will give the link to uh, where I bought them from. They were 200 bucks plus uh, about $40 for shipping. Uh, they fit great. Uh, I've gotten tons of compliments on them. Uh, for anybody that's ridden in my car or uh, you know just looked inside of it. Um, they're super soft and comfortable and they really give a new life to this interior. Uh, I put on some hood shocks. Uh, these ones were off of Amazon. Uh, they're SusTech, um, you know, just like pretty much everything else that I've done to this, they're pretty straightforward, uh, just bolt on, um, but they're nice for, you know, if I ever have to get under the hood, uh, I don't have to worry about using this thing. Um, I could remove that, I haven't done it yet, but uh, yeah, I got the K&N intake, I think uh, that may be new, I don't think I've done a video since I put that in. That's, you know, the nicest thing that I've added to this car. It doesn't necessarily help fuel mileage. It, it may increase performance uh, here and there, but it, the biggest difference is the sound. So uh, yeah, maybe we'll go through that and see what it sounds like um, after I get done with my little test drive to make sure everything's tight. One other thing, I did actually get these S2000 wheels for my winter tires. So when it gets around to late October, early November, uh, when you know, signs of snow are on the way, uh, I'll, I'll put these on. Uh, I did paint them. Um, I put some gunmetal paint on there. I actually got the set of a total of five rims. Um, it was about a hundred bucks. It might have actually been 80. It was somewhere. It's one of those two, 80 or 100 bucks for the five of them. Uh, so it was a pretty sweet deal. I really couldn't turn it down and the bolt pattern is exactly the same. Um, so they fit really, really nicely on the CRZ. All right, so we are gonna give this a little test drive. Get it out to the main road. I'm here at my parents' house. Driving 
through a little field so I, I apologize if it's a little bit shaky um, I would use a GoPro but I don't have mine with me well everything seems good so far it's nice and straight the main thing I'm looking for is less body roll um, you know, I don't know if it's necessarily going to help me with turn in, but I do some autocross here and there. Um, and I, you know, this car rolls a lot. And you can pick up the inside rear wheel. All right. We're in sport mode right now. Just trying to see, you know, a little weaving here and there. I mean, it feels flatter. It's hard to say, I haven't gone around any turns super fast yet. Uh, and I'm not necessarily putting the car through its paces like I would in an autocross event. But we're gonna come up to a couple nice turns here. so far you know it feels good I it just feels like it doesn't want to roll as hard as it did before this car these you know without a sway bar and the stock suspension it's it, it leans a lot and that's a, it's okay you know if you know how to control that and you want that that's fine I'm really looking to just like try and flatten it out and get a more consistent um, you know turn in and just overall uh, suspension feel when I'm doing autocross, that way I'm more confident going into the corners harder, and I, you know, I know how the car is going to react every time. So that's the install of the sway bar, um, the Progress Technology rear sway bar for the CRZ. Uh, you know, felt pretty good in that little test drive. Everything uh, fit pretty nicely. So yeah, we are uh, we're all set with that. There's probably a couple more things I'm going to end up doing to this car. Um, it is at 103,000 miles, so I don't want to put too much money into it. Um, you know, I've got some rust developing on some of these, uh, you know, rear seams. Uh, I do live in upstate <laughs> New York, so, uh, you can see it's starting right here and then it's, it's also spread down to, uh, right here where the panels come together. Um, other than that, the car's been great. Um, I'm averaging somewhere in the neighborhood of like 36 miles per gallon, uh, but I do not drive conservatively um, unless I'm going on a long trip then I try and get the best fuel mileage I can so, and I've gotten up to 44 uh, mpg uh, on some of those trips but yeah it's a great little car I've uh, you know loved having it uh, I'm looking to get something in the next couple of years uh, thinking either I'd love to get an Alfa Romeo or uh, a new Camaro SS uh, if I could get a Z28 like a 2015 or something that'd be awesome but I don't think I could ever uh, shell out the cash for one of those um, I think I'd probably rather buy a house or something. Uh, thanks for watching guys If you have any questions or comments, just put them below. It's been a while since I've been on YouTube uh, So uh, let me know what you thought of the video uh, what I could change or do better uh, But thanks for watching